If you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. If you don't like it, please tell me why so I can improve. I haven't talked about aliens for quite a long time, so I thought this today I would talk about messages that we have attempted to send to aliens. Now, in the fairly dim and distant past, there were various ideas about how to send messages to aliens, but that was in this solar system. There was lots of prize offered to anyone who could communicate with aliens, from which Mars was specifically excluded because it was considered to be too easy. There was another plan to have an enormous magnifying glass and burn words into the desert. And another one was to build an enormous diagram of Pythagoras' theorem in fields. I think it was in Russia. And none of these came to pass. However, eventually Carl Sagan came along and he produced a number of successful messages to aliens. Successful in the sense that they actually got sent. first one of these occurs twice on the Pioneer prose, Pioneer Pioneers 10 and 11, which were an early 70s mission to Jupiter and Saturn. And both of these are on a plaque. That plaque has a diagram of the spacecraft, a diagram of the way the spacecraft went past the planets and then left on an arrow after it passed Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn is represented with a line through it, as in rings. It's later been discovered that all of the outer planets have actually got rings and obviously it also includes Pluto because at that time Pluto was considered to be a planet up until quite recently and it also contains a male and a female figure standing next to the spacecraft and this has been claimed to be Caucasian but in fact the idea was to present the woman as somewhat oriental looking as well and this is unfortunately lost because of the way the figures are drawn also the vulva is missing from the female body and the man's arm is raised like that in greeting. The only trouble with that, obviously, is that it might make it look like everyone walks around like this all the time. There was some controversy because of the nudity in the picture, and the nudity is uh, was actually considered to be pornographic by some people, so that was not, um, there was some protest about that. The units used in the picture are based on the hyperfine transition of the hydrogen molecule which produces a radiation of 21 centimetres, so it's all based on 21 centimetres and the height of the female figure, I think it is, is all indicated by a number next to it. The numbers are in binary with a vertical line representing a 1 and a horizontal line representing a 0. The location and the time of the launch is also indicated by a star-like figure of 14 pulsars. Pulsars are very regular rotating neutron stars that give out a particular signal at a particular speed. And the rate at which they slow down will perhaps give some indication of that. And the location, obviously, there are 14 in order to provide redundancy. Pioneer 10 and 11 probes are sent out in a direction where they won't encounter any nearby stars for several million years. So that really is uh, a message in a bottle that's probably not going to get picked up by anyone, even if there are loads of civilizations in the galaxy. That was in 1972 and 1973. The next thing to happen was the Arecibo telescope message. The Arecibo telescope message is a series of 1,679 bits. That number was chosen because it's a semi-prime number. It's only got two factors, so the ratio of the message uh, would be clear from that. It's only got two things it can divide into. And it depicts a picture with the numbers from one to 10 at the top, in binary again. Uh, the elements used to make up DNA underneath. The formulae of the different compounds that come together to make up DNA underneath that. The population of the Earth, the number of bases in DNA, a human figure, a rough representation of the shape of DNA, and finally the diameter of the Arecibo telescope dish along with a schematic diagram of the dish transmitting it. It's aimed towards the cluster M13 which is 25,000 light years away. Uh, that cluster was chosen because there are a lot of stars in that direction. Um, it's not likely to get anywhere at 25,000 light years. It is said, or has been said, that Arecibo dishes anywhere in the galaxy could communicate with each other 
but I find that really far-fetched and obviously it will be over a period of hundreds of thousands of years anyway. The next messages to be sent were in 1977 on the Voyager 1 and 2 outer solar system missions and these are golden records. These records contain a number of things including diagrams and pictures from uh, the Earth, uh, greetings, music, various kinds of music. They have a diagram indicating how long it takes once again uh, how fast that it should be spanned and in a uh, tradition which probably younger people don't realize there is an inscription on the playout groove of the record which states to the makers of music all worlds all times that nearly got the record banned there's also a pure sample of uranium 238 which decays over a set period of time which will also give anybody who picks it up an idea of how old it is and the diagram of the pulsars found in the pioneer probes is repeated on that. Finally there have been a couple of other messages both sent from radio telescopes. One of them was sent from the Ukraine I think and was I think all the traffic on Bebo. The Voyager records will actually reach two red dwarf stars fairly near to the solar system within about 40,000 years. One of them will be reached because the star is moving so rapidly towards the sun that it will actually encounter it a lot earlier. So it's about 40,000 years time for each of those. There have been another couple of messages sent. One of them was that Bebo message that you may have heard about and another one was the base sequence for a protein involved in photosynthesis. That's it for today. I just thought you probably should have another alien type video because it's been ages since I've done that and um, I'll see you tomorrow.